Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verse 10. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaran Jana Yashodanandana Braja Janaran Jana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Pari Brajaka Chaja Stotara Sata Shri Shri Madhaisi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Chaja Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prince Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Mathura Dham Ki Jai Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verse number 10. Bijamam sarvabhutanam vidiparta sanatanam Buddhir buddhi matam asmi tejas tejas vinamam Bijamam sarvabhutanam vidiparta sanatanam Buddhir buddhi matam asmi tejas tejas vinamam Bijamam sarvabhutanam vidiparta sanatanam Buddhir buddhi matam chasmi te jaste jasvinam aham bijam seed mam unto me sarvabhutanam 
of all living entities. Vedi, try to understand. Partha, or son of Pritha. Sanatanam, original, eternal. Buddhi, intelligence. Buddhimatam, of the intelligent. Asmi, I am. Teja, prowess. Tejasvinam, of the powerful. Am, I am. Translation and purple Prashita Prabhupada. O oh, son of Pritha, know that I am the original seed of all existence, the intelligence of the intelligent and the prowess of all powerful men. Purport. Bijam means seed. Krishna is the seed of everything. In contact with material nature, the seed fructifies into various living entities movable and inert. Birds, beasts, men and many other living entity creatures are moving living entities. Trees and plants, however, are inert. They cannot move, but only stand. Every entity is contained within the scope of 8,400,000 species of life. Some of them are moving and some of them are inert. In all cases, however, the seed of their life is Krishna. As stated in Vedic literature, Brahman, or the Supreme Absolute Truth, is that from which everything is emanating. Krishna is Parabrahman, the Supreme Spirit. Brahman is impersonal and Parabrahman is personal. Impersonal Brahman is situated in the personal aspect that is stated in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, origina originally, Krishna is the source of everything. He is the root. As the root of a tree maintains the whole tree, Krishna being the original root of all things maintains everything in this material manifestation. This is also confirmed in Vedic literature. Yatovai Imani Bhutani Jayante. The Supreme Absolute Truth is that from which everything is born. He is the prime eternal among all eternals. He is the supreme living entity of all living entities, and He alone is maintaining all life. Krishna also says, that he is the root of all intelligence. Unless a person is intelligent, he cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam Vidhi Partha Sanatanam Buddhir Bhudibhatam Asmi Tejas Tejas Vinam Aham So here Krishna continues to explain how he can be known, how he can be understood. Um, it's not easy to understand Krishna. It's not even easy to understand the real spirit soul. In fact, if we look around in the society in which we live, everything is based on bodily conception. Aham mama iti, aham mameti, I am this body. And uh, when the body is finished, everything is finished. But actually, we don't, subconsciously and inherently, we don't accept this premise. We don't believe that death is, everything is finished. We, we, we live in such a way that we desire to live forever. We go to great extent just to extend our lifespan. And we are naturally inclined to get more and more knowledge about who we are and about our environment. And we yearn for happiness. We go to great length to be happy. This is called in Sanskrit Sat Chit Ananda. Eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. 
this is the nature of the living entity. And because this is our nature, we automatically seek it. And because we seek eternity, because we seek knowledge and happiness, that means it exists. We wouldn't be seeking something which is non-existence. It is not possible. Therefore, human life is very important because we can actually understand that we can achieve something higher. Animal life and tree life, insect life, aquatic life, don't have that facility. The facility of human life is the ability to inquire about our spiritual nature. If we fail to inquire about our spiritual nature while in a human form, we will lose this human form in the next birth. And in fact, all the animal species don't have this facility to inquire about spirituality. But in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Athatho Brahma Gigaso. Now it is the opportunity to inquire about spirit. Athataha. Now. Now means what? Now means that we have a human body. Because the human body's facility is to inquire, if we live just to satisfy our senses without inquiring into a spiritual nature, then we might as well have an animal body because an animal, he lives to satisfy his senses and he's not interested in asking spiritual questions. So, the example is given again and again, even here in the purport, proper comments from the Vedas, that now it is the time to inquire about spiritual life. About, inquire about what? About, inquire about that thing or that source from which everything emanates. My God, you wake up in the morning, you look out of your window, there is so much variety. There is trees and gardens and roads and mountains and rivers and oceans, and it just happens to be there, it just dropped out of the sky. Come on, you walk in the countryside, in, a, in any civilized country, especially in England, you see so many manor houses, so many beautiful, uh, beautiful castles in France, so many chateaus in Italy, so many villas. They didn't just drop there. You cannot just walk in to one of these villas on one of these manor houses and act as if it belongs to you and not recognize there is an owner, a proprietor who sets the law in that property. So similarly, this is logical. You extend that to the material, extend that to the material universe in which we live. It didn't just get dropped out. It is coming from the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Krishna says in the Gita, Aham sarvasya prabhavo mataha sarvam pravartate. Everything is coming from me. I am the beginning and the end of everything. Iti mahatva bhajan temam buddha bhava samam vitaha. And those who are intelligent, those who understand what is the purpose of human life, Buddha Bhava, who have proper intelligence, they worship me, Krishna says. Why do we worship Krishna? Because Krishna is the proprietor. Just like if I walk into a manor house or into a villa, then I meet the proprietor. And I establish a relationship with the proprietor. He has the right to let me use his property. In the same way, we have the right to use Krishna's property provided we accept that he is the owner. Otherwise, we become thieves. Uh, Krishna says that uh, bunjate tuagam papam ye pachanti atmakaranat. One who eats and prepares food for his own sensual pleasure, atmakaranat. Agam papam is eating sinful activities. Why? Because it doesn't belong to him. The reason that we, before we eat, we offer the food to God is because we acknowledge that we are not able to create even a grain of rice. What to speak in the Vaishnava culture where we offer food to Krishna and we accept the remnants as his blessings. In every spiritual culture there is a system to offer at least grace before you eat. To thank God for giving us 
because we recognize that we cannot create it. We are dependent upon a higher authority. So in the Vedas, the main business of the Vedas is to uh, instruct people how to act in such a way that they can satisfy their material desires, but at the same time not lose sight of the ultimate goal of life, which is to understand our spiritual nature. So it is normally a gradual process, going through life after life after life. You you live one life, you accrue so many merits, so much good karma by following the Vedic instructions. Next life, you start off from that point and again you carry on. So gradually, life after life, over many, 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 sometimes thousands and billions of births, you come to the point of understanding who you are and what is your relationship with God. But we don't live in such a culture. We live in a culture which is simply dedicated to the body. The bodily conception in our present culture is so deep that even after we die, we go to great length to preserve the body. I remember, I'm from, from Italy, so we have a, a practice that when somebody dies, the body lies in state and all the relatives and friends and acquaintances come to pay respect. And then there is some food offered. I remember when my mother died, that was done. From the hospital, the body of my mother was taken to the mortuary and the mortician, he made it very pretty, very beautiful with a nice dress and cosmetics and makeup so that she looked like if she was asleep. She was brought into my house and she was put into the bed, in her bedroom. And then all the neighbors would come, all the friends would come, pay their respect, offer their condolences and have a big feast. Because it was bodily, actually, my mother wasn't there anymore. That spirit soul had gone. I was in a bed when she died in a hospital. And from one moment to the next, she simply, she was in a coma, but she, she became conscious. She looked at me and she said, my dear boy, be a good boy. And then a breath exhaled and she, she was gone. The body was there, but she was gone. I understood immediately. But no, in our society, we cling to the body. I was just watching a documentary that in Russia there is a whole team that are digging up bones from the Second World War and trying to find out whose bones they were so they can return them to the family. They think if they get the skeleton or some of the bones back from their deceased ancestor that somehow uh, there's progress. In some... Uh, Aboriginal culture in Southeast Asia, the villagers keep their body after it dies, they keep the body in the house. They somehow mummify it and keep it in the house and live with it for months and years. In Egyptian culture, they would mummify. Today, even today, they find mummies, they find bodies of Egyptians, Egyptian, Egyptian aristocrats still in a, in a preserved state. But this is crazy. This is madness. This is not reality. It is not reality. So, to come out of this reality, we require some special mercy. And we got it in our time, but in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you study the philosophy that Shri Prabhupada brought from India to the West, the beginning of the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was explained by two great personalities called Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. They were actually Brahmanas from a very aristocratic Saraswata Brahmana Gotra family, but they were engaged, they moved from their birthplace in Karnataka, they moved to Bengal, and they became the minister and the, uh, the prime minister and the finance minister of Hussein Shah, who was the ruler, the Muslim ruler of Bengal. And this, because they were working for the Muslim government, 
they associated with Muslims, who of course were meat eaters, non-believers in Krishna, and they became contaminated and they became rejected by the Brahminical community. But because they were Brahmanas and because they had studied Brahminical culture as, as they grew up, and even though they were working for the Muslim government, they still kept, they were very rich, so they were able to keep several Brahmanas and every day they would study and, and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. There is a place called Ramakeli, about 250 kilometers north of Mayapur. And next to Ramakeli, there is a city of Gaud. Gauda, it is in ruins, but that was the capital of Usain Sa. And near the city, there is a temple of Madame Mohan with two ponds, a copy of Shamakunda and Radhakunda, and that was established by the king for his two ministers, Rupa and Sanatan. Anyhow, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling from Puri through Bengal on his way to Vrindavan, and when he came to Malda near Ramkeli, the two brothers, Rupa and Sanatan, they went to see him. And... Uh, begged his mercy. And later on, they were both instructed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They left their their political service and became sannyasis, mendicants, babajis. And Lord Chaitanya, when he instructed Sanatan Goswami, Sanatan's first question was, Ke Ami, Kemo Amara Jara Tapa Trai. Ke Ami, who am I? Kemo, Keno, why? Amara Jara, am I getting problems? Tapa triya, but the threefold miseries. The threefold miseries are the atmic, are the bhotic, and are the divish. Are the atmic means the body and the mind. The body and the mind is giving us, me, the soul, tremendous problems all the time. People go crazy. People drink. People take drugs. People do all kinds of things to try and live peacefully within the body. But the body becomes diseased. The mind becomes corrupted. These are called adiatmic. Then there is problems called adibotic. Adibotic means other living entities giving us problems. The mosquitoes will bite us. The government will, will bang our head for taxes. Our lovers will not reciprocate. Our family will not reciprocate. So other living entities give us problems all the time. They are called adibotic. And the third group of problems which we face are called Adi Divic. Adi Divic means natural catastrophe, too much rain or drought, earthquakes, floods, it's going on. Now we are in a, here in Europe, we're in a tremendous heat wave. People can hardly exist. In India, they are drowning in water. These are called Adi Divis. These are called Tapo Triya, the triple miseries. So, so Sanatan said, why, who am I? This is the first question. And then why am I being harassed by this three misery? He and I, Johnny, come on, I don't understand why this is happening to me and how can I become enlightened? How can I counteract these problems? This is a sane man. I'm suffering. How can I become free from suffering? Shadya Sadhana Tatva Puchite Najani says, not only am I suffering, I am also not able to ask the right question. I, I'm not able to ask what is beneficial for me. Kripa Kori, please, Sat Tatva Ka Apani, tell me this truth. Personally instruct me. This is the beginning of spiritual life. That you inquire. You, you inquire internally. And then automatically, by the grace of the Chaitya Guru, or Krishna in the heart, then the external Guru will come. Now, a couple of words about Guru. Prabhupada is my Guru, and he had many, many thousands of disciples. So when Prabhupada left, automatically all these disciples, they can also become Gurus. But there are different levels of Gurus. It's just like... If you want to become a pilot, you go to fly school and you learn to fly a single engine plane and they give you a license. You're a pilot. You can fly the plane, no single engine. You cannot say because I'm a pilot flying a single engine plane because I have my certificate as being a pilot, it doesn't mean I can fly a 747. 
if I go and try and fly a 747 with only a pilot license for a single engine plane, I'm putting myself into danger and I'm putting all the passengers into danger also. So it's the same thing about being guru. You can only teach as much as you know, not beyond what you know. You can only accept worship to the degree that you are qualified to accept, not beyond. You cannot imitate. Just because I'm a pilot on a single engine plane, I cannot imitate the pilot of a 747. It's dangerous. So, bearing this in mind and accepting Srila Prabhupada's instructions, it is always better if we remain humble and meek and always remember that we are the eternal servant of Srila Prabhupada. And by His mercy, we know what is Krishna. And by His mercy, we can make progress. So, in the 13th chapter of the Gita, Krishna explains many things in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the manual for spirituality. You want to learn to fly? You have to study the manual. You want to learn to fly spiritually? The manual is Bhagavad Gita. And he says, Indriyarteshu vairagyam ahankara evacha jamma mrityu jarabhyadi dukha dosha anudarshanam that indriya arteshu, in the indriya means senses, and arteshu means in the matter of. In the matter of your senses, and our body is actually made up of senses, mind and senses, vairagyam, you need to become detached. You need to control your senses. Why do I keep insisting on sense control? Because if you cannot control your senses, you cannot understand who you are. Jamma mrityu jaravyadi, birth, Old age, disease, and death. Dukkha, dosha, anudarshanam. Krishna says, look at this very carefully. Anudarshanam. Anu means minutely, and darshanam means to see. And anu means to follow. You don't look independently. You look according to the Guru Parampara coming down through Srila Prabhupada. And Dukkha, dosha. It is painful material life, and it is full of miseries. So these two things go side by side. Control of the senses to understand our spirituality and realization of the futility and the misery of material life. And because we are hankering for, for eternity, because we are hankering for happiness, because we are hankering for knowledge, we can achieve that state that is our real state, Satchit Ananda. We can achieve by hearing. Sevon Mukha Hijivado Swayameva Spurati Adaha. Ataha, Sri Krishna Namadi, the name of Krishna and Krishna himself, is understood by serving him through repeating the instructions of the previous Acharyas. So in this verse, Krishna is saying, Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam, I am the seed of every living entity. Vidi Partha Sanatanam. Krishna is calling Arjuna Partha. Partha because Arjuna's mother, her name was Prita. And she was given to, as a baby, to the king Kunti Boja, who had no children. And she was called Kunti. So Kunti Devi uh, was a great, great personality. She was able, she received the mantra from Durvasa Muni. She was able to call any demigod. And she had five powerful sons. Arjuna was the was the, was the third son. And uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a a chapter dealing with Kunti's prayers. There is also a separate book uh, composed by Srila Prabhupada with all his commentaries. Very beautiful prayers to Krishna. She was actually Krishna's aunt. Why? Because her brother was Vasudeva. Vasudeva was Krishna's father. So Kunti was Krishna's maternal aunt. So we can, no shortage of instructions. Uh, for those of you who are listening, who are ladies, you can take great, great, uh, great uh, wealth from the instructions, from the teachings of Kunti Devi. 
There is no shortage. Thank you very much. So I have an, uh, an announcement to make. Next week, Tuesday, I am leaving for India. I'll be in India August, September and October. So I am not 100% sure the first week I'm there how I'm going to arrange my internet connection to be able to give the class, but I'll do my best. And uh, if I miss next Wednesday, then I will definitely be online next Friday. Thank you very much. So we have some comments. Mandi Priyar, good evening. Hare Krishna, Mandiji from England. Devananda Dubey, Hare Krishna. Ekanatha D. Dasi, Hare Krishna. Devananda Dubey, what is he wrote? He wrote in Sanskrit. Krish Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ah, he's got also another sloka. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Haraye Paramatmane Pranata. So my Sanskrit reading is not so not so good, but I can manage. Klesha Nashaya who Krishna who destroys Klesha all our problems. Govindaya Namona Maha. My dear Govinda, all glory is unto you. Krishnaya Vasudevaya, Krishna who is the son of Vasudev. Haraye, he is Hari, who takes away all our miseries. Paramatmane, who is the super soul within everyone's heart. Pranata, I offer my respect. Very nice, Devananda, thank you very much. So we'll see you all next week, Wednesday, and if not, definitely next week, Friday, from Vrindavan. Hare Krishna.